Buongiorno, good morning, Yoreget. Good morning. Good morning. Greetings to everybody. I will have a camera soon, but for some kind of Windows um, update problem, I lost my camera just right now. Earth is low, but we will Take see. it easy, take it easy, no problem. We hear your beautiful voice, Eugene. Thank you. I also see you, most of you. Greetings to I everybody. And we, we just let's wait a couple of minutes and uh, for everybody to join. In the meantime, let me introduce you to the people here. Uh, uh, the engineer uh, Diego Brava, who is the president of BioValley Investment, uh, our uh, partner at the Urban Center. Mm -hmm. And then we have an uh, engineer, not doctor, I'm sorry, engineer Barbara <laughs> Codan, who is the general manager at the Urban Center. Uh, part of bio for dreams and then we have uh, Marco Dal Ferro from our business nursery unit in Trieste and then here with me uh, there is Dr. Elisabetta Borello who is co-founder uh, and vice president external relations in bio for dreams. Okay, nice to meet you even via the zoom. And of course, Zuzanna uh, uh, Hayes is the president of the Santa Gota Research Center at the University of Page. And now we have also Rene Butto from CISA. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Rene. Thanks Hi, for, uh, for the invitation. Uh, we shall wait a couple of minutes more for uh, ETJB to join. And then I think we can start. Yes. Yeah, I have some technical help with my camera. Sorry. Yes, just right now. Hi. Hi. Thank Hi. Got an additional camera here because the my computer camera is lost due to some kind of software problems. But uh, it's nice to meet you. And now I see that everything is fine. Well, uh, with concern to to um, Professor Legname. Uh, he will join us uh, uh, in uh, around uh, uh, eleven o'clock uh, because uh, he, had, uh, uh, he had a little problem now, but uh, he will be with us later uh, for uh, for the presentation. He's the director of our uh, okay. So I think, uh, I think uh, we can uh, uh, almost start now. So uh, one more minute, and then we, we will start. Okay. I will check just a second uh, with uh, high CJB if uh, everything is okay. Morning. Good morning. Okay. Uh, so, no, I could have got to Good morning. Okay, so uh, I think we can start. Good morning, and I would like to let uh, engineer Diego Brava give a, a welcome and opening remark to this uh, day event uh, where we are introducing our partner, the University of Page Santa Gota Research Center to the Trieste uh, ecosystem. So, uh, Diego Brava, buongiorno. Buongiorno, buongiorno. Good morning. Good morning. So thank you very much. I am the honor to introduce uh, uh, this uh, important meeting for us. Uh, it's very important for three reasons that I shortly I will describe. The first reason is I introduce myself. I am an electronic engineer. I made a thesis in neuroscience <laughs> very many years ago. After I developed uh, 
a company from a startup to more than 200 million euro in clinical engineering outsourcing. And I try to uh, I develop a university course or university course of the University of Trieste in clinical engineering. I support the university and I'm professor to univer in the university. Uh, second point, city, Trieste. Trieste is a research, a scientific city where Italian government uh, uh, spend something around 100 million euro from 100 million euro per, per year to 300 million euro per year in the next in the in the past uh, 40 years and for this reason uh, trieste has a uh, very many research institution and uh, in this institution today we have an uh, important institution in this meeting with us the day they will introduce themselves thanks to this institution we have the a density of startup in Trieste, that's uh, the major density uh, in Italy, uh, provincial city of Italy. And, uh, uh, and uh, but we one, we are one tenth of one uh, uh, research or scientific city in Switzerland or Germany and France and one hundred less than in the USA. So we have to accelerate the incubation of the startup. For this reason, with Bio for Dream and other partners, we started this uh, urban Morning. center of Trieste. And uh, we have the honor uh, to have uh, also you as supporter inside the 30, 40 supporter that we have for this, uh, uh, for this goal because we have to convince young researchers to start a company, a new company, an innovative startup in the health sector. This is the first one mission and in, in, in digital sector. So uh, I know the, uh, what we are doing University of OPEX uh, and, uh, and for us it's very important to try have a meeting with you for the, for three reasons. The first reason is uh, that uh, we uh, are working uh, a lot. Our research system is working with Slovenia, with Croatia, and with uh, Austria inside uh, inside uh, what I call transfrontalier uh, research project in one end, but uh, you are in the other side <laughs> of Austria. Yeah? And so we could uh, with you and uh, try to develop an ecosystem for try to develop a new research project uh, with the idea to transfer more and more, yes, uh, uh, our, the, the knowledge of the university and research centers to the entrepreneurial ecosystem for trying to uh, develop uh, innovation. The idea is uh, more research means more innovation, means uh, more young people that work, uh, graduated young people that work in innovative company means, uh, last but not least, uh, more uh, uh, human right because uh, when the people work they are happy and when the people are not working they they are not uh, happy and and the society do something that we don't like i think so i think that uh, this is uh, not only a research uh, problem it's not only industrial problem by the way i am a vice president of association industrial association that put together one more than 1,000 uh, uh, 1, company with uh, more than uh, 60,000 workers. workers. But uh, the problem is yes. how to transfer innovation also with startup, innovative startup in this environment. So I was maybe too long in my introduction, but I try to give you the, the idea 
And the reason why I'm so happy that, that we are together today. And I thank very much Bio4Dream for this opportunity. Okay, thank you very much for, uh, for the introduction, uh, Dr. Bravar. And uh, really, I would like to uh, thank you again. And I use every single opportunity for doing that because the vision of creating in Trieste a, a hub, an innovation hub, uh, strongly uh, with the strong will also of the European Union to create a connection point between uh, uh, countries which are doing very good things in their own ecosystem, but they many times are not well interacting with each other. It, it, it's, it's a crucial aspect. And today we want to do something like that. We want to try to connect these dots between uh, two uh, uh, center of excellence, uh, and in, with the idea of fostering novel opportunities for business, um, as you just mentioned. So uh, with this, I would like to uh, give word to uh, engineer Barbara Codan, who is the general manager at the Trieste Urban Center, which is the house of startup that was recently founded with the will of the city of Trieste uh, in order to do exactly what we just mentioned. Barbara? Thank you, Fabio, and thank you, Engineer Bravar, for the introduction. Let me just uh, share the screen. Just a second. Okay. Okay, can you see this, the presentation? Right. So, welcome, everybody. Um, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Barbara Codan, the General Manager of uh, Urban Center. And uh, it's uh, really a great pleasure to welcome here, uh, welcome you here, unlucky still virtual, but uh, welcome here in the new home of innovation, not only startup, but in general innovation. So what is Urban Center? As a part of the extraordinary area of Old Port, Porto Vecchio, which had been for decades uh, the commercial port of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and is now really an outstanding architectural and industrial heritage site that uh, the Trieste municipality is uh, redeveloping and requalifying. The municipality has also launched a tender for almost 1 million euros for the management of the innovation center. The project is developed on three macro, macro areas uh, corresponding on the three floors of the building and uh, ICT applications uh, developed to promote uh, collaboration and interaction between all the subjects uh, who will participate uh, to the activities uh, of uh, the center. So I would like to present also the company's member of the management of the urban center that won the tender. So the leader of the consortium is Bio4Dream, an entirely private capital certified incubator of innovative startups in the very early stage phase dedicated to the life science. BioVal Investment is a Trieste-based company that invests in startups in a bio-high-tech sector, operating in Friuli Venezia Giulia and also in the neighboring region of the Alpe Adria area. The Andrea Galvani Alto Adriatico Technological Hub, located in Pordenone, uh, has been dealing since uh, its uh, establishment in 2002 with technology transfer and also entrepreneurial development. Also, the Pordenone Hub is a certified incubator. Last but not least is uh, RMB Gate, a company founded uh, in Trieste in 2019. Uh, by Fabrizio Renzi, who was for more than 20 years uh, the Director of Research, Technology and Innovation for IBM. And he is now involved in uh, linking research and innovation with business and industry. So it's also the idea to connect the dot that uh, uh, Fabio introduced. So the urban center is positioned as a, an international hub with well-defined keyword, innovation, development of uh, entrepreneurial activities and cross-functional uh, contamination on the territory. So, but uh, uh, let me uh, go in detail a little bit uh, on uh, how the activities on the three floors of the urban center are articulated. On the ground floor, though, we will find the fab lab, the maker's house, 
uh, we have uh, technologies such as uh, 3D printers uh, that can help uh, promoting innovation, technology transfer, and also entrepreneurship. So from the research to the uh, company of young people, innovators, and uh, creatives. On the first floor, sorry, on the, oh, sorry, <laughs> just first floor. On the first floor, the contamination of uh, the ideas. So we go from uh, making something to sharing ideas. So the contamination of ideas are the main uh, goal of the space. It's dedicated uh, to the interaction between all the actors. We have uh, people, young students, uh, and uh, uh, so our future, but also companies, research centers, and universities like today and also who are ready to support innovation, such as business angel, venture capital, banks, and insurance. Finally, the second floor will become the house of the startups. They will find a place here by the tender that will, promote, will be promoted by the municipality of Trieste, and the startups uh, will benefit from uh, the best service that we as managers uh, uh, will, uh, will, off will um, offer by, uh, by us in the urban center. So the hub is uh, uh, positioned as a reference center for two specific sectors, bio high tech and digital high tech. And uh, they are also aligned with the European program, so the Horizon 2127. Uh, I will go uh, a little bit deeply uh, to the, with the ecosystem in which the hub has been born. It is located in a city rich in history, but even more in science, such as university and uh, research center that uh, are here today. And uh, some of uh, them were born even before Italy was here. Trieste is a European city of science 2020, is the capital of a region which at European level is a strong innovator. And this is unique in Italy. So uh, the classification, uh, this classification, you can see also in the growth of the uh, startup numbers in Friuli Venezia Giulia. And that this is, was and is possible uh, due to the fact that uh, those uh, who can favor this process are all present in the region. So the urban center wants to be their home and point of reference. So the idea of connecting all the dots and become the center of this connection. So and I gave just uh, this uh, brief introduction to the place and what we can uh, do in this, uh, in this place. And I really thank you uh, for being here Sorry. And uh, I um, truly hope that uh, this is just the first of a series of meetings that uh, will lead to uh, the birth of the collaboration, uh, international collaboration between uh, the subjects presented here today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Barbara. And so uh, now it's uh, now that, that you know what's happening here at the Urban Center, let me just spend a couple of minutes to uh, give you some keywords as to why we think, uh, as Dr. Brava mentioned at the beginning, that this is uh, a very important uh, moment for us. Um, let me start by showing you this slide. Um, this is how we envision the system of technology transfer. On one side, there is you, the institutions, research center, clinical center, universities, who are trying to push towards a market their ideas. And uh, um, creating connection between these different uh, players is uh, um, definitely one of the most important aspects. And that's why also today we would like to focus on uh, the possibility of joint grants, joint opportunities, creating synergies. But this is the, what I call the input in the system. Then there is an acceleration and there is an output. The acceleration is the most crucial part. It's the part where a startupper or somebody who would like to take the idea coming from a research lab into an applied research project finds himself in front of 
activities, which he does not know how to do because it's not in its core business. So creating an ecosystem where you can take uh, the right facilities, the right financial players, the right scientific competences to accelerate that process is of crucial importance. And here I think that the research center sitting around the table today can play a major role, not only for introducing in the input phase novel projects, but also through their facilities, through their expertise, becoming the solution for those projects who are being accelerated. And that's one key element, using already existing expertise in order to boost in a synergic way the project forward. The third element is the market. Market meaning that any projects leaving this hub that wants to go towards the market must find financial or industrial players at the right moment, because not always these players can be uh, appropriate, especially when the project is still in an early phase. So the mission that we would like to develop at the urban center is to create a synergy between these different players so that when there is a project which significantly brings an added value or a solution to the market, we try to put together around the same table, the market players, the industrial players, and all of the ecosystem to discuss that particular project, run what we call the gap analysis, and also find the solution in order to boost the project forward as fast as possible. Because when a startup or when a scientist in a research center develops some idea and patent an idea, there is a clock which starts to turn. And time is the most crucial issue, more even than the money, to get the project forward. You need to be fast, you need to drive the project the right way in order to approach the market in a way that the market then accepts the idea in the mature phase. And topics are multiple. You have scientific topics to be discussed, you have regulatory strategies, you have strategic assets around the company, legal aspect, grant writing, so many different topics that must be brought together in one place. Now, one of the mission that we want to accomplish at the Urban Center is to do all of these things not on our own. We are trying to develop instruments which enable to work together in a synergic way on all of the different steps of the uh, technology transfer. And I will give you a couple of examples. First one, the laboratories. It does not make sense for each startup to develop its own laboratory renting or acquiring instrumentations that they only need partially. Especially because when you're talking about life science, which means biosensor, biomaterials, molecules, uh, and all other type of, of uh, devices, diagnostics, you talk about projects which need multiple functional laboratories. You need a little bit of biology, you need a little bit of molecular biology, of in artificial intelligence, and so on. So what we want to create is uh, a project which we have already implemented in several sites in Italy, and we want to do that also in Trieste, where the single projects can access the laboratory they need at the time they need when it's needed for their development project. That's one element. The second element, innovation circle. We want to make the projects, the scientists, talk as fast as possible with the end user. The end user are the stakeholders which at the end of the line take the idea, take the product or the service and implement it into the market. Not only because we want to know what's their opinion on the project, but because we want their support into the development of the project. And that is why we have companies such as Janssen, Dompe, IBM and so on alongside with financial players such as Priulia, Biovalli Investment and so on, 
to help the project and giving all the financial, industrial, and, and, and market expertise needed to tailor those projects towards an applied uh, research application. So laboratories, which must be transversal and open access and shared. Putting all the right stakeholders around the table. And third element, create a synergy between the different ecosystems, starting from research. Now, we have several sites in Italy, but as you can see here, we are expanding this network as we, uh, as we cited at the beginning, connecting the dots along the way uh, with different players. Um, I'm very happy to have here all of the uh, most important relevant people in the, uh, in, in the St. Agota Research Center. So I would like to say hi to Gerge, Attila and, and, and Vladimir there with whom over the last three years, we have started a very successful proof of concept collaborations. We have clinical studies ongoing between Italian startups and the University of Page. We have projects from the Santa Gota Research Center who are now being analyzed in our pipeline. And I would like to create a synergy by which at the Urban Center, we can take projects from CISA, we can take projects from ECJB and help each other's project by providing complementary expertise. We think that one of the easiest starting point to create this interaction is to start discussing science. At least that's something that is very simple and very clear. That's why I really wanted to have this meeting today and I thank you for, for being here in order to present what you do, who you are, what are the competencies and the major research activities that you run in your network, so that at the end of this meeting, and I will take this back in my closing remarks, I would like to start creating a task force with reference people from each institution that can regularly meet to discuss opportunities in terms of joint research project, but also joint applied research project and industrial uh, projects. So with this, I would like to thank you again for being here. And I will uh, give the word to uh, Marco Dal Ferro, who will very briefly introduce you to uh, the way we, we, we help uh, these early stage project into, into becoming potentially interesting projects for, for development of startups. Marco? Yes, good morning, everybody. Let me first share my screen. Okay, sorry, a second. Okay, I hope you can see my presentation. Let me first introduce myself. My name is Marco Dal Ferro, and I work as project startup analyst within the business nursery of Bio for Dreams. Today, I will try to briefly uh, describe the activities that uh, here in the Urban Center as uh, business nursery will carry out. But first, uh, let me stress what uh, Fabio already told you about the need to support early stage startup in uh, life sciences. Making the jump from research to business is difficult. As a former scientist, uh, willing to run a startup alone uh, is a there's the need to uh, acquire a huge set of skills that typically are outside from a scientific uh, comfort zone. And this will definitely slow down the time to market, which is critically, especially when a technology has been patented. So in this complex scenario, uh, we try to help startup with providing them what they need in a specific time in order to speed up the process. The business nursery is the unit within Bio for Dreams where projects and startups are analyzed. We focus our analysis on specific aspects of the project. And here in this slide, you can see only some of the aspects that have been considered. We believe that the team has a central role as well as the technology and the market need. Once the project has been analyzed 
and the needs have been identified, we built together with our network a tailor-made supporting programs, which is basically aimed to boost the development of the process. Here at the Urban Center, we want to translate the approach that we have in the business nursery of bio for dreams We will provide the startup with a series of supporting programs such as a challenging startup ecosystem where the network with other startup will be an added value we will grant the startup to access our grant office and ICT services. We will provide the startups with a technology and scientific network. We will support the management of preclinical and clinical studies. And finally, last but not least, startups will access to financial, to our financial and industrial network. Finally, let me present the team of the business nursery. Fabio Bianco, you already know him, is the chief scientific officer of bio for dreams but uh, he has a PhD on pharmacology and is also an entrepreneur. Demetra Pelos, she's a biomedical engineer, she's the head of a business nursery and she's our reference regarding patent. And uh, there's me, I studied here in Trieste, I have a degree on functional genomic and always here in Trieste, I had a PhD on molecular biomedicine and after two postdoctoral experience, I joined the business nursery of bio for dreams Thank you for your attention and I'm pleased eventually to answer your questions. Thank you, Marco. And let me, uh, before I, I give word to Costanza, uh, let me really tell you why we are presenting you these different units. The reason is because uh, uh, we want to create at the Urban Center a place where any idea that will come from the activities that you will present to us and that from the synergies that this future task force will develop. And we want to assure you that you will find at the Urban Center all the opportunities to really boost those projects forward in international collaborations. Um, the, the, the recent event that we have developed as bio for dreams uh, with our network enable us to tell you that we are positioning ourselves at the urban center as a ecosystem made of different players which are all of the parties that have supported the urban centers because all of you have signed letters of support to the urban center and that's the reason why we are presenting this to you in order to to create uh, opportunities and synergies throughout uh, uh, different ecosystem. We are already present with a representative office in Shanghai, China, as partners of the uh, CINEPARC, the National Centers uh, Associated for International uh, Relationship in Life Science. We are the reference partner for Southern and Central Europe. And we are very close to uh, create an operative site in Pennsylvania, in the United States, for all of the projects coming from our ecosystem. So the, the message that I would like to share with you is that we want to create in Trieste a hub where the most interesting project can really take a leap forward in a very fast and productive way in order to create value. Now, the value starts from sharing research and sharing best practices. So one of the things that we want to do and uh, we, are, uh, we are very happy to, to, to announce it here, is uh, a, 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 a synergy between the different uh, uh, grant offices and the different uh, uh, teams uh, in each institution, uh, which are uh, supporting the, uh, the networking around uh, uh, the development of, of research uh, uh, international research networks. So I let uh, Costanza Cordi, who is the head of our grant office, uh, present you the proposal that we would like to, uh, to bring forward and to especially develop at the uh, Urban Center in, in Trieste. Costi, are you there? There's a nice picture of you, but... 
but not really connected. Okay, so while she's reconnecting, uh, maybe it's there. Let's see if it works now. Kostya, are you there? Sorry. Yes, sorry. I tried to share my screen and something happened. So let me try again. Okay. Okay, one second. Okay, so now you can see it. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Uh, so, um, just uh, a brief introduction of our grant office. Uh, um, our, let's say, our story as grant office uh, uh, starts before actually um, Bio for Dreams uh, with the, with the company uh, pre-existing that was called IMS, and um, so we developed these uh, these skills uh, as uh, um, uh, in uh, in grants development. And um, at the moment, uh, we are uh, um, we have as users. Uh, internal users, which are uh, mainly bio for dream and this network of companies and uh, partners, as well as uh, um, national or international research partners, uh, which uh, are in different way associated or have uh, some um, common program with us. So uh, we either uh, address uh, the needs of our internal user or external users. Um, we have uh, um, quite a good track record in, in, uh, in the long period, so we had about 41 proposals funded and uh, um, about uh, 8 million of uh, contribution for, for our network, and uh, um, more than 70% of these uh, um, funds uh, that we collected uh, come from uh, um, uh, European uh, direct, let's say, direct European funds. Uh, so mainly um, the frame, European framework programs uh, or uh, what was recently called Horizon. Um, so um, we mainly work uh, on the areas of health and food and uh, ICT applied to, to this, uh, uh, let's say, digital health uh, as overall team. Um, and uh, um, we have, uh, let's say, um, of course, a uh, um, high rate of uh, uh, proposals that were uh, um, assessed as uh, above threshold, so eligible uh, in, in the sense of uh, quality, uh, which is uh, around 70%, uh, and uh, success uh, in, the, in the full proposal uh, to be funded, uh, which is uh, uh, which was 29% uh, in the seventh uh, framework program and decreased to 19% uh, in, in uh, Horizon 2020. Um, overall, uh, it's, it's, uh, we, we, saw, we experienced some uh, um, decrease in success, but it's still a uh, quite good rate, uh, mainly considering that we are working, uh, as, as I told you before, uh, in areas uh, such as uh, health program, uh, uh, which is very, very competitive. Um, and uh, in Italy, um, in addition, uh, we have uh, um, quite low uh, national performance uh, um, rates, especially for uh, Italian, uh, Italian coordinated uh, um, projects. So um, this uh, might be, we have uh, been uh, thinking of this uh, uh, limitation of the Italian system quite a lot. And um, we, we, we think that it's partially due to um, some lack uh, in our system to develop, uh, uh, let's say, um, a strong partnership and uh, consortia able to convince uh, European Union to be uh, strong enough to develop a high level proposal. Um, and in addition, Looking at the um, key messages from Horizon Europe, which, as you know, is the main uh, pro main European uh, research program, uh, which is which was launched uh, in, in the last month uh, and uh, is, uh, is still uh, um, launching new calls uh, in in this uh, time month. Uh, so that the focus of Horizon uh, Europe uh, seems to be. Um, quite high level. So let's say that uh, uh, 
for the first time, they, they developed strategic orientation. So uh, they started from a very high level um, program, uh, focusing on some area like uh, digital and, enable, uh, and enabling technologies, uh, areas li uh, like like um, ecosystems and biodiversity. So everything that could be related to um, um, let's say climate change, uh, natural resources management, uh, and this this uh, um, this world, and uh, the still link to this. Uh, there is the area of uh, circular economy, uh, climate ne neutral economy, and uh, um, these themes that are related to energy. And uh, uh, in addition, there is uh, the, the, the area of uh, um, resilient, inclusive, and democratic society, which includes all uh, themes related to health and support uh, to uh, fragile groups. So um, very broad themes, uh, which require a lot of integration of uh, uh, expertise and uh, um, a lot of thinking, let's say, on how to really uh, reach the point. In addition, other, um, other messages that were quite clear from, from this new program is uh, um, the focus on um, uh, transforming research into innovation. So uh, we, we see in this new program that uh, Europe wants to boost, of course, uh, uh, what is the translation of research into market opportunities and uh, to, um, let's say, be more competitive uh, compared to other strong uh, um, economies such as the US uh, or uh, uh, China, uh, South Korea, Japan, because we still, um, as they say, we are lagging behind. Other, other messages that were quite clear from, from the Europe are um, the focus on impact. Again, uh, it's not uh, enough to, let's say, it's quite depend, depend I mean, of course, uh, the, the, the new framework program has different, uh, um, has different pillars, so each pillar has some peculiarity, but as general idea, they want something that has a, a clear impact and impacts on different uh, aspects. So, um, we think that at least for uh, what are the big pro with, with, um, for the big projects that are not maybe linked to the development development of a specific technology, but um, the, the huge uh, let's say uh, consortium uh, that uh, de develop new research uh, and uh, innovation, um, we need to propose something that is a clear impact uh, on a different level, scientific impact. Uh, what uh, they um, what is linked to either high quality new knowledge, uh, human capital, and diffusion of knowledge, societal impact that was already quite clear in uh, Horizon 2020, but it's still underlined even more in this new program, uh, which is uh, uh, the mainly everything that is uh, linked to the uptake of the uh, results of research program into something that is tangible for the society. And uh, um, the last one, which is uh, uh, the, the, the economic impact, of course, which is uh, strongly related to the creation of new enterprises or boosting new enterprises. So at the light of all of these uh, uh, mm, of all uh, these uh, input that we got, um, we, we, we uh, have decided to create this new initiative that was announced before by Fabio uh, that we call uh, IGO, uh, which is uh, an, inter uh, an interregional grant office uh, where we would like to bring uh, uh, several actors of uh, uh, the research and innovation ecosystem uh, we have been in discussion with several university and research centers and incubator uh, in the north uh, northeastern part of Italy and Adriatic, Adriatic region. And uh, there was uh, uh, quite significant interest uh, from all the partners, in, uh, the members involved. And also um, we propose to have a structure which is, uh, let's say, a group of member and group of partners. Uh, which could be legal entities uh, um, in, with, with uh, 
sharing with us uh, either um, scientific collaboration, uh, strate strategic agendas, or any type of synergies. And uh, the, the overall aim of this interregional grant office is really uh, to um, create a stronger system that will that uh, could be able uh, to produce. Uh, um, to create stronger consortia and uh, develop uh, higher quality proposal, more credible for uh, mainly for Europe, but not only. Uh, we, we also address other international grants. So the, this idea is still under definition. We don't have uh, a defined management structure yet, but uh, uh, we are working on this idea and uh, uh, we would like to be ready uh, in the next month uh, uh, to operate uh, with this uh, um, IGO. So the main area of work uh, would be monitoring grant opportunity. Uh, so mainly, let's say, um, um, focusing on area that require international integrated partnership. So um, for example, this uh, may not be uh, Mm, very relevant for some small programs in which uh, this, a single startup can succeed. Uh, this um, this uh, interregional grant office is uh, mainly uh, to is mainly to address uh, um, huge challenges. Let's say at, in, at inter, mainly at international level. Uh, the other the second point is in any case to. Um, increase our um, enhance our support to research group to identify grants and opportunities and the last one is uh, uh, support of course uh, uh, in grant preparation submission and negotiation what we think would be the added value of this new initiative uh, is uh, um, to have an active joint discussion on topics uh, that uh, um, require uh, strategic thinking and uh, uh, innovation and uh, um, facilitate the creation of uh, uh, consortia with all the expertise needed, uh, even in faster way, because one of the um, uh, limitation we have uh, in the grant preparation is all often time. So uh, often we, we have uh, insufficient time to uh, build up uh, a, a consortium with all the required expertise. Uh, while we think that this uh, through this network, uh, through this networking, we could uh, um, smooth the process and uh, be faster, and uh, also try to engage uh, discussion with Europe and be updated on the uh, all the trends uh, and uh, on uh, hot topics uh, uh, of discussion um, that uh, are uh, um, that are mainly. Uh, at Brussels, but uh, could be also communicated to national delegations. So engage uh, uh, more with, uh, uh, let's say, this uh, um, uh, with the, the 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 strategic decision of the union and try to um, stay really updated. Also to understand uh, some uh, um, nuances of the discussion of or of the work programs and. Um, uh, that's that's mainly the idea. Um, so that's first time we present it uh, publicly. And uh, if you have any feedback or input, uh, we are totally open. And uh, actually, would be we I would be very grateful uh, for for any any idea on this matter because, as I said, it's still under development. And um, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Costanza. And uh, uh, you, all partners, will receive in the near future a, 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 a brief synopsis of uh, the IGO project. Uh, this is something which we believe will become very important, especially as we try to create synergies uh, between our different layers, because we strongly believe that each of us uh, represent an ecosystem with their strengths and potential issues but the strengths can become the solution for somebody else's issues. So by creating these synergies, we can really try to boost fast 
the most promising project, which is at the end of the day, what everybody wants to achieve. So with this, I hope we didn't annoy you too much with all of the presentation of the different units. The idea was to uh, start now the presentations of the different uh, uh, players, the different institution, keeping in mind that these are tools available for all of you to create those synergies that we want to bring forward. So with this in mind, I, I, I let the word to uh, uh, Dr. Susanna Hayes, the president of uh, the Santa Gota Research Center at the University of Page in Hungary. And I thank everybody from the Hungarian team to participate today. Zsuzsa. Thank you very much, Fabio. I'm very grateful to you for organizing this event today. This was particularly useful for me. And now I much, clear, much more clearly see what the story is about. And thank you for all of you who presented. This was really interesting. And I'm very sure that we can benefit a lot from being part of this network and ecosystem. And I'm also sure that we can provide an added value to the team as well. So let me first introduce um, myself and my colleagues. Uh, so we are a research center within the university. The university has 10 faculties. We are besides the faculties. I will give you some more information about the research center. But first, I have three colleagues with me. Uh, Ferenc Jakob, Gergely Kinch, and Vladimir Kochubey. Uh, I will start with Ferenc because he is going to leave at 11. He has a class. He is the um, scientific director of the research center, but he's a biologist, a virologist and he's the head of the National Virology Lab and also the Virology Research Group of the Research Center. So Ferry, could you just briefly introduce yourself and say hello before you leave? Thank you so much, Gigi. A very welcome for everybody. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have too much time, so I only just say hello. As just uh, as mentioned, I'm the scientific director of the Center of Research Center and also the um, um, the scientific vice dean at the national faculty of, um, of sciences in the university and as also just as mentioned i'm a head of the biological research laboratory so i'm quite busy right now and these times um and thank you for organizing this meeting and uh, i'm so sorry that i have to leave but Juji will uh, and Jujana hayash will of course at the university center and the center of research center Thank you. I think it was more important that Ferry got an impression of what is going on and then we will further discuss details anyway. Yes. So thanks for being here. Absolutely. Um, Thank you so much. And then uh, the, the second very important member in the team is Vladimir. Uh, he is uh, the coordinator of the innovation stuff going on at the research center, some parts of the grant projects as well. He, uh, Vladimir, are you here? He can hopefully introduce himself. Yes, yes, I start myself. Hello, everybody. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. I'm really happy that we are together. Uh, most of most of you not for the first time. I think uh, it's a great idea and it's a great, great project uh, on behalf of uh, Fireful Dreams and the municipality of Trieste and all the participants. I hope uh, that it's a good start. I'm sure this is a good start. And we are really keen on, partic on the participation and, uh, and we would like to discover uh, the possibilities and, uh, and, uh, and uh, possible paths uh, to follow. It's a very open, very op wide open uh, opportunity for uh, the University of Page and especially for St. Agatha Research Center and the researchers. So uh, I think we are happy to make the first step together with you on this. Thank you. Thank you. So we've been in touch with um, with Fabio and bio for dreams in the last few years. And uh, Vladimir helped a lot with uh, selecting the projects that we have already started to work together on and also to, to boost some innovation projects. Thank you. And then the, the third member is Gergely Kinch, who is the, uh, the colleague from the University Technology Transfer Unit, and he has expertise with companies and company networks. Gergely, can you say some words? Yes, thank you. Thank you. I would like to welcome uh, everybody. Uh, a few words about myself. 
Uh, I am the, I am an innovation manager from the in the technology transfer office of the University of Page, and also a managing director of the R and D company of the university. Uh, uh, just a few words. I remember when we first met with Fabio. <laughs> Hello, Fabio. A few years ago, uh, and when the cooperation started with the Bio Four Dreams. I think for today we have several. Uh, results, positive results, and expertise uh, working with you with the Bio4 Dreams. Um, I can say, I think, in the name of uh, the Department of Informatics and Innovation of the university, that it is a pleasure for us uh, to welcome this new kind of level, a new level of uh, cooperation possibilities. Uh, with Bio4 Dreams and, of course, with the partners of Bio4 Dreams and uh, the Santa Agota Research Center. It is very good to hear that uh, there are new possibilities of cooperation is open for the stakeholders. And I can say that we will, as, uh, as always, we will provide our support to make this partnership flourishing and advantages for every stakeholder, every partner of us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, and, and myself, I'm a medical doctor, graduated at the University of Page 25 years ago. And since then, I've worked at the Department of Pharmacology. So myself, I'm a pharmacologist. I've never been a physician, but I work on drug research and drug development projects, mainly preclinical. But we have analgesic and anti-inflammatory drug development projects. And one of our candidates is going to go to clinical phase one studies this summer which we are very proud of. I think that's a great achievement uh, when a project starts from the university and gets to the clinics. So I'm the uh, director, the, actually I'm now the president of the Santagota Research Center for a few years, but uh, since the, the center started in 2012, I have worked here as a kind of scientific uh, secretary and then the scientific director. Um, so I'm, um, I've prepared uh, two, we've prepared two presentations. One is a kind of introductory presentation of the research center. And the other one is about our strategy for the next five years, because the situation changes just right now. This summer, our university will turn to a foundation university, a kind of private university. This is the initiative of the Hungarian politics and government, uh, because um, now we are a state university, but the structure will change and innovation and development will be key, uh, leading key uh, challenges for us as well, even more than earlier. I met Fabio a few years ago at the Bio Europe conference. And since then we've started several projects together. And I, I hope that now this kind of network can broaden this collaboration. So first, I started to open a, a presentation. I'm sharing the screen. Just a very brief one to introduce our center. Can you now see my screen? Yes, that, we can. Thank you. Good. That should be a full screen. So we are the part of the University of Page. Page is located on the south of Hungary, close to the Croatian border. We are a Mediterranean uh, city and a very historical university city. Well, city, it's more a town than a city. So we have the oldest university in Hungary, uh, which was 650 years old a few years ago. Uh, so we have 10 faculties. It is a multidisciplinary university and the research center is 100% located or related to the university, but it is not faculty based, it's besides the faculties. Uh, among these 10 faculties, five faculties belong to the research center, but we collect the research projects, research groups of excellence. We are much more related to the faculty of medicine or medical school and the faculty of natural sciences of which Ferenc is the, the vice dean um, and then also the Faculty of Pharmacy, the Faculty of Engineering and Computer Sciences, and the Faculty of Health. So five among the 10 faculties are related to the Research Center. It was established in 2012. 
So now we are in our ninth year. This is a very unique structure in Hungary. And I also think that in whole Europe, as far as I've seen, because it's not independent, it's within the university, but it's more or less independent. So we can create our micro environment. And I'm trying to show you what kind of areas we cover. So we have interdisciplinary research. We aim to be, and I think we are, the flagship of life sciences, uh, not just within the university, but in a little bit broader aspect within the region. We work on a research team or research group basis and on a core facility basis. We have right now 20 research teams, but it's the dynamically changing because it's based on the, set, on, on the excellence and some groups leave within two, three years and some groups come in. And we also have five associated members, which means that they are not physically located in the university. They don't run labs, but they are part of the scientific community and they, they use our core facilities. They work very strongly together with our uh, management team. Uh, now, we, in last year, we had 20, uh, 250 publications mostly and primarily in, uh, in um, Q1, V1 papers, so internationally excellent papers. We basically focus on biomedical research, medical biology, biomedical research, and related areas, including drug development and, um, and also physics and, and chemistry that are coming together with the biomedical research. This is a very important aspect that we are members, full members of four European research infrastructure networks, these ACRIN memberships. Uh, oops. Uh, one is uh, the one is the HECRIN. This is the Hungarian European uh, Clinical Research Infrastructure Network. ACRIN is the European uh, um, uh, consortium, and HECRIN is the Hungarian um, hub. And the Hackerin, the hub leadership is located in the Santa Agote Research Center. They are leading the, the, uh, um, the academy based or academy initiated investigator initiated clinical trials. This is a huge network in Hungary, part of the European network. Elixir, which is the, the, the bioinformatics European network, and several leaders are working, including our um, core facility head, Attila Gyerese. Uh, he's the leader of the Hungarian hub of Elixir. We are um, members of two Hungarian hubs of the Eurobioimaging. Uh, network, one cellular and molecular imaging, that's one Hungarian hub, and the other one is the preclinical and medical imaging Hungarian hub. Uh, BBMRI, which is the biomedical and biobanking uh, European network, the Hungarian hub was just created last year, and the Santa Gotei Research Center is leading this, um, this University of Page um, membership for this hub. And this FNHRI, this is a, a food health uh, safety uh, European research infrastructure, which is just now being created. And we are members of the Hungarian organizing uh, committee. So I think we are very important to be strongly embedded in the European research networks. Um, so uh, I think that's one of the strategic aims and one of the tools that we can use very effectively. Uh, one very important strength of the research center is that we have the clinics just by us and several of our research teams are related to the clinics because of having the medical school as well and the clinical center in the background. And we have a lot of preclinical and clinical trials going on uh, that are related to translational research. So either forward or back translating of different projects. Uh, we host two national laboratories. This is a new system in Hungary started last year, the Human Reproduction National Laboratory and the Virology National Laboratory that is led by Professor Ferenc Jakob. And we have a Biosafety Level 4 laboratory, which is unique in Hungary and also in the region. And that's very important that we have strong translational approach. Uh, the areas of international scientific excellence uh, cover neurosciences. We have a neuroscience center here, both related to clinical and preclinical research, 
uh, and neuropharmacology that is uh, basically led by myself and my team. Virology and infectious diseases as for the national laboratory, endocrinology, immunology and human reproduction, again related to another national laboratory. We have a very strong uh, gene translational medicine, drug research and development uh, uh, column. Genomics and bioinformatics that uh, is led by Attila Yenesche and also related synthetic chemistry, separation science and spectroscopy. So physics and chemistry related to the, the mainstream of the biomedical research. So one strength is the clinical background and the other strength is the synergistic interdisciplinary research <clears throat> for the main focus. Um, we have the main activities related to the, um, the drug development expertise and the other main activities is related to the, uh, to the um, uh, intensive collaborations between the academy and in the, in the industry. And this is why we started a quite strong uh, <coughs> a co collaborative project with, uh, with Bio4Dreams as well. Uh, why we are, I think, uh, also strong here within the university and also internationally, uh, we have um, an international scientific advisory board. The members are indicated on our website. They, they come from the main expertise areas uh, where we are doing our research. And some are about half of this advisory board having 13 members so far. Half of the members are from abroad and half of the members are from Hungary, but having uh, international scientific uh, reputation and, uh, and expertise and knowledge. And we also have an industrial innovation advisory board and committee. Uh, they are mostly from Hungarian uh, industrial partnerships and they help us to somehow promote our local innovation activities. And we also host conferences, seminars, workshops, because our infrastructure is really nice. Um, uh, you can see some videos and pictures on the net. Um, so we can um, also physically host some kind of uh, um, um, uh, scientific uh, um, uh, web webinars and also some personal conferences, hopefully in the future. Uh, besides the 20 research teams, we work on a core facility basis. We have these eight core facilities. Um, I think they are very nicely and coordinatedly and transparently operating. Uh, we've got a huge animal facility for mice and rats. Uh, we have small animal and preclinical imaging facility with small animal NMR, and micro CT, vascular uh, imaging, um, and so on. Uh, we have flow cytometry and molecular analytics, genomics and bioinformatics, histology and microscopy, mass spectrometry, uh, cell and tissue culturing and tissue engineering, and a very, very well, well equipped nanobio imaging high resolution microscopy core facility. Um, <clears throat> um, regarding the international grants, we have several cost and Erasmus projects and ITM projects. We would like to increase our ability to get some more H2020 or actually uh, um, more um, network related research grants. So that I was really happy to see that there are some opportunities to be members of a grant network um, that, um, that, that could be possible for the future. And, um, and also we would like to promote our um, activities in the field of innovation to implement and manage the innovation uh, workflow, uh, have some more um, market-based research projects or market close research project, um, projects going on and um, we would like to have some, um, some more partners to, to, to help us uh, with uh, promoting the business models. Uh, I think our core facilities uh, help this activity. And uh, also we started to improve our international visibility by, by promoting the communication, the science network communication, and also our, uh, to build up our brand management. And, and Vladimir helped us a lot uh, within this, uh, this, this activity. 
So just some examples for the projects and initiatives in the last uh, few years. I already mentioned the national labs. Uh, we have already these two, but there are three more national lab projects that are in progress and hopefully we will get those by the end of July. Uh, one is a drug research and development national laboratory. The other one is a translation in neuroscience. And the third one is a preclinical and medical imaging uh, national lab. We have not yet got the official result yet, uh, but the good news are coming. So hopefully we will we'll have three additional national labs on the platform. Um, we are considered as national centers of excellence for neuroscience and for, for bioinformatics already, and also for virology and, um, and infective um, disorders. And there are some examples for successful drug research and innovation projects and drug repositioning projects. In the last years, we have very strong collaboration with Austrian uh, companies like Calixa from Vienna and Sabina, the Central European Bio Bio Bioscience Innovation and Accelerator Company, in, also located in Vienna. We established together with them a company called Algonist a few years ago. Some university members are part of this startup. And this was one of the success stories in the, uh, in, the in the last two years. And also we started um, successful research collaboration and also potential uh, business related collaborations uh, through bio for dreams with neurozone and we have a, a, a long ongoing collaboration with farm novo in sweden but these are just some examples we have some some own startups and and um, and spin-off companies uh, as well um, from the uh, university independent um, area, we have strong collaborations with iBioscience, which is a Hungarian uh, but quite big company, uh, Pannon Pharma, which is in the region, and Softoro Foss. Uh, Foss is a company from Denmark, which bought Softflow, which was originally a Hungarian company, and they focus on a drug on um, on food safety and mycotoxins. We have a common research team with them in the Saint Agatha Research Center, and also some some common R and D and I projects. And we started already four projects together with Bio Four Dreams in the area of regenerative science and personalized medicine. Uh, myocardial infarction non-invasive test kit, uh, anti-inflammatory drug and medical device development. It's very, very early yet, but we are on the scope to discuss further. And we can offer several services through our uh, spin-off, Farm in Vivo. And with, with this company, we focus on in vivo animal models related to any CNS disorders, inflammation and pain. So that was just a brief introduction. If you have any questions, we can discuss just right now or uh, after the presentation, very, very brief presentation of our strategy for the next few years. But I have that presentation in a separate one. So I stop sharing. For the, for the next one, so that we give a complete picture and maybe we can keep the question session afterwards. Okay, thank you. Then uh, we can go on for that one. And I promise uh, I will be quick. Can you now see that screen for the strategy for the next five yes. years? Yes. Okay. So um, our vision is related to what we had successfully performed already in the last years. We would like to become uh, one of the three leading research institutes in Central Eastern Europe in the field of medical biology. And we would like to develop into a transdisciplinary excellence center, which is <clears throat> even more open for innovation and enhances the social and economic implementation of um, our research results. Very strongly related to this vision, our mission is um, to, to, to foster the research and innovation capacities of the region and Hungary in biomedical research and related areas. So we would like to be added value 
for this kind of activity, not only for the whole university, but also for the other faculties, but also for the whole region and the country. And this is why we are discussing further the opportunities uh, with you. Um, so our values, and this is just the kind of revision of what I already said, that we are already center of excellence in certain areas, including neuroscience, virology, and bioinformatics. Uh, we are internationally recognized. We have uh, internationally leading researchers, and our portfolio can be uh, quite um, uh, flexibly adjusted to the national and international scientific requirements. We have already got this well working core facility system. We have national laboratories. We are closely connected to the clinical facilities. We have intensive collaborations with excellent clinicians. We have strong translational medical research approach. And uh, we have these uh, faculty links, these five faculties that I already mentioned. Uh, we are relatively independent, but work within a uh, framework under the umbrella of the University of Pitch. We have a, a very progressive and dedicated scientific community and management as well. And we can rapidly react to the new opportunities, challenges, and uh, the infrastructure is really of high standard. And we are members of, and also we have leading roles in several European research infrastructures that I already uh, specified. These are the main excellence areas. I already also summed this up, but I can also send you this presentation in order to clearly see later. Um, so, and, and we would like to, to, to really utilize the benefits coming from the synergies of the interdisciplinarity. Uh, the main goals are, of course, because we are research center, the international scientific excellence, uh, to increase the funding from different sources, including the income from the European research grants, but also from the industrial partnerships and co-development projects. And we would like to manage and promote the early phase biomedical innovations. Uh, and just from this summer on, uh, using the opportunities that this novel um, operational model change will provide, we would like to have a new operational infrastructure model. And within this novel infrastructure model, we would like to even more increase our visibility and networking. So it's one of our main strategic aim. Uh, we would like to implement this quality assurance system. It is on the way by the end of uh, this year, we will have a full quality assurance and management system installed and implemented also. We would like to play an active role in the science park project in the region that has started a year ago. Um, we would like to, to, to develop the infrastructure and we already got some more money from EU funded Hungarian grants to increase the infrastructure capacities. We would like to increase and, and, um, and, and more actively manage these ERIC partnerships and, um, and, and, um, in, and uh, also um, promote the, uh, the, the um, development and uh, innovation projects more actively. Uh, the main tools are the focused research portfolio development, increase the publications, that's the only product a researcher can primarily put on the table, uh, promote the, the r and &I projects, uh, uh, broaden the research networks uh, and also the number of the national laboratories and uh, implement this quality management system. Sorry, for the sake of time, I have to ask you if you could please uh, uh, show, uh, try to conclude. Thank you. Yes. Okay. This is this is the final concluding uh, slide of mine. So uh, the horizontal supporting projects are just helping us to to achieve all these goals. These are just some indicators, and that's it. These are just some samples for the funding and the integrative uh, things. So thank you. That's that, that's the conclusion. I already uh, said everything I wanted, and I can send you later some short films 
that uh, summarize. Uh, I had a chance to, to show those videos and uh, to see those videos, and I, I would really like to share them with all of you because they are a presentation, very nice presentation of what is the center, what it's doing. And so, uh, again, just to, as a reminder, this is a first uh, event in which we are learning uh, about each other, but there will be future opportunities also for going depth, in particular for this uh, strategic vision that, that Jeanne just mentioned, which puts uh, the University of Page and the Santa Gota Research Center at the center of a strategic development of innovation in the Central European area. And we would like to create that bound, a solid bound uh, with uh, what is happening at the Trieste ecosystem. So thank you very much, Jeanne, for this presentation. And I would like uh, uh, to give the word uh, to Dr. René Butte from CISA, so he can introduce uh, uh, the ecosystem, starting to introduce the CISA ecosystem uh, in Trieste. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, everybody. Well, I introduce myself. My name is René, and I'm uh, the responsible of uh, the um, technology transfer office here in CISA, which is called uh, uh, valorization in the innovation office, uh, we changed the name. But uh, today, um, because we are speaking about uh, life sciences, uh, uh, we have, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the director of uh, laboratory, Prion Laboratory, uh, who is uh, uh, Professor Legname, who is uh, among us. So I would let uh, uh, the floor uh, to, um, to Professor Legname to give a general overview uh, of SISA, uh, who we are, and in particular, um, a general overview uh, with concern to the fields uh, uh, of life sciences, uh, neuroscience in particular. Uh, Giuseppe is also a, an inventor. He has a, a long experience in uh, patent uh, filing and uh, in collaboration with industries, uh, European and um, American industries. So he is uh, the perfect person to give a general overview today. Giuseppe. Yes, good morning to uh, everyone. Um, can I have the, can I share my screen? Yes, we're seeing the screen, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so um, as uh, well, good morning, everyone. And uh, I would like to just give you a brief introduction <clears throat> of uh, CISA. CISA uh, stands for uh, Scuola Internazionale Superiore di Studi Avanzati and is located uh, here in uh, Trieste. Okay, and in brief uh, uh, is uh, uh, one of uh, the center uh, in, in Italy uh, with a special statue for those that are, of you that are not Italian. Uh, we have uh, um, this uh, special status uh, that is granted to just a handful of institute uh, called uh, Scuole Superiori and uh, which are uh, basically uh, funded by the government, Italian government, with uh, uh, a very um, pronounced uh, um, uh, focus on international uh, academic uh, research. Uh, CISA in, in particular is, has been the first uh, Scuola Superiore uh, funded in Italy uh, dated back in 1978, uh, which granted the, the uh, PhD title. Uh, it was uh, the forefront of, uh, of this um, aim. And uh, it focuses basically uh, almost uh, completely to postgraduate uh, teaching and uh, research. I mean, basically we are at a research institute and uh, we have uh, only three departments, uh, physics, mathematics, and neuroscience. And the idea of the founder uh, of the school behind uh, uh, focusing only on these three uh, departments 
was to, of course, um, increase uh, and develop our understanding uh, of the world, uh, physics and, and the modeling of the world, but also uh, bridge this uh, know-how with neuroscience, uh, with the, uh, of course, uh, a very ambitious uh, project of uh, understanding uh, the, the, the brain uh, through the laws of physics and uh, uh, through mathematics. Act, uh, currently, CISA um, in, uh, has uh, just over 70 uh, professors, um, in total 133 researchers. Um, including, uh, of course, uh, temporary staff. We have uh, just uh, shy of 300 uh, uh, PhD students, which, by the way, who, by the way, come from uh, all over the world. Uh, more than one third of our students are international students. We have uh, a, a, a quite uh, large administrative and technical personnel that is supporting all our activity. Without them, uh, our life would be very uh, difficult. And so far, we have been awarding, uh, awarding uh, more than 1,500 PhDs uh, in uh, just a brief uh, uh, life of the school. Another thing to mention is uh, the school, uh, because of uh, its international focus on uh, research and researchers, has been quite successful in uh, getting uh, uh, European funding. And in just uh, uh, over 14 years, uh, we, we got um, uh, more than 25 ERC, I think uh, the, the last number is 27 uh, so far. And of course, uh, we hope, uh, we do hope to uh, increase this number, number, number in, com in coming years. Launched, uh, launched uh, pro um, Horizon program. So um, by numbers, uh, uh, we still um, have to compete uh, with uh, not only with other uh, Scuole Superiori, uh, but with all the academic uh, world, uh, national and international. And of course, everybody now is looking at ranking, uh, everybody is looking at impact factor and uh, so on and so forth. And just for those of you that are curious about these, uh, these uh, items, uh, we are among the top university in Italy, although we are very small, as I, as I just showed you uh, by the numbers. And because of the, um, highly successful campaign of uh, um, attracting international funding, particularly European funding, we do a score among the top uh, Italian scientific institute in terms of uh, research grant obtained uh, related, of course, uh, this uh, uh, considering the very small number of our faculties. Uh, the latest the Nature Index uh, uh, acknowledge this uh, again uh, because um, among the small, you know, smaller, we are still defined as young university, we're the, the the top one, and of course uh, among the top in the international uh, uh, list. This is uh, uh, a very. Um, um, satisfying uh, uh, ranking, uh, but I have to say that the most uh, challenge comes from maintaining uh, this uh, top position, not just uh, getting uh, uh, once, once uh, every now and then. So uh, PhD, uh, as I said, we are focusing on postgraduate uh, teaching and uh, therefore we grant PhDs uh, in different areas. As I said, we have three departments, physics, mathematics, and neuroscience. And among these different um, departments, we have a broad range of uh, 
research interest and um, teaching activity. In physics, uh, we go from astrophysics, cosmology, astroparticle physics, uh, theoretical particle physics, uh, um, theory and number simulation of condensed matter, statistical physics, and physics and chemistry of biological systems. In mathematics, we uh, finally grouped most of the interest of our faculty in two uh, PhD programs. One is mathematical analysis, modeling and applications, and the other is geometry and mathematical physics. In neuroscience, the department uh, uh, which I belong, uh, we have four different uh, PhD programs, neurobiology, functional and structural genomics, uh, genomics and cognitive neuroscience. And uh, there is a newly added uh, program, which is a joint program in molecular biology, uh, joint because it is uh, shared by uh, other institution here in the region of Fiori Venezia Giulia, uh, who are University of Udine, University of Trieste, and ICGB, uh, who you will hear after me uh, later on. And I have to uh, mention that, that, that there are other activities that are being uh, uh, planned and actually uh, discussed within the school. And of course, uh, data science is uh, very fashionable these days, uh, and uh, it will be one of uh, uh, the other activities that will be uh, uh, landed in the next uh, few months. I have to say that some of these programs, like physics and chemistry of biological system, bridge with the interest in uh, neuroscience, but also uh, like uh, um, theory and neuro, uh, neuro, numerical simulation of condensed matter may actually bridge to other interests that we have in neuroscience. Altogether, we have a clear mission of uh, uh, achieving interdisciplinary uh, uh, activities among our interests. So what are the research uh, focuses of CISA, uh, biotech and aging? And I will discuss this in a minute. Uh, data science and high performance computing. This has been going on for a few years now. And, uh, and a newly entered uh, interest is artificial intelligence and machine learning. So as far as uh, the neuroscience program uh, is uh, concerned, we uh, have a variety of research groups uh, in, uh, in neuroscience uh, that, as I said, they uh, span from uh, cognitive neuroscience, uh, where um, my colleagues' uh, interests are on understanding the behavior and the sensor um, machinery of of, um, of biological systems and uh, neurobiology, which investigates uh, all sorts of uh, physiological and disease-related uh, uh, mechanisms, uh, which they uh, employ molecular, cellular, and integrative mechanisms uh, within the uh, nervous system. Other interests are new materials. A uh, few of our groups are involved in, in this graphene flagship uh, research program, where they look at the properties of graphene within uh, also the nervous system. And of course, there are all sorts of development of novel methods of biostatistical analysis, informatics, uh, and so on and so forth. Because this is even more important right now where some of our research uh, faces uh, the um, management of large data, especially in uh, genetics, genomics, uh, and so on. And definitely these uh, methodology are actually helping us in understanding more the uh, life science uh, processes. So, the what, what's the mission of CISA? Well, first of all, we are a school. So uh, we are a school that uh, aims at training uh, uh, new researchers. 
Uh, and uh, we're proud to actually to say that uh, most, uh, the vast majority, most of our uh, PhD uh, 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 students and then uh, grantees are um, well placed in, in the research world. Uh, and uh, not only in, in Italy and Europe, of course, but all around the, the world. The environment CIS offers a multidisciplinary approach to projects because people are freely talking and sharing their interests and findings. And sometimes just having a cup of coffee is important to actually uh, have a big push in, in their development of their project because uh, the, the, the institute itself uh, provides an environment for highly inter interactive uh, uh, um, position between uh, researchers. Um, we always uh, tend to uh, give uh, innovation um, in, uh, in, in the research we are, uh, we are doing. And of course, some of us, and. Uh, and some uh, unpredictable uh, uh, researchers are actually involved in uh, technology transfer because some of our research as it usually occurs um, may uh, find application in the, in the real world. And that's basically it. So if you wish to know more about our uh, technology transfer uh, uh, activities, I uh, give the floor to Rene that can give you uh, more information about this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very much. It was very, very clear. So I now uh, introduce Dr. Viviani from uh, ICJB for her presentation. Martina? Uh, can I share my screen? Uh, I cannot share the screen. Uh, Lisa, can you please uh, take away the presentation so that we can let uh, HGB present? Professor Legname. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> In the meantime, I don't know if my colleague René wanted to add something. I, I, let, I thank uh, Giuseppe. And uh, well, after his presentation, I would let the floor to, uh, uh, to you. And then if there are questions or other things, uh, well, uh, we are at the complete disposal. Thank you very much for... Uh, the sensitiveness. No, thank you, as we were having some minutes. So I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes. Let me make big. So I just wanted to introduce you very briefly to the ICGB, which uh, um, is an intergovernmental organization funded uh, by UNIDO in the early 1980s which counts today 66 member countries and has uh, um, three main components that we call components, but basically these are our laboratories, which are based in Trieste, uh, which is also the seat of the headquarter of the organization, uh, New Delhi in India and Cape Town, which is the youngest component, so to say it was founded in 2007 only, whereas the centers in, in Trieste and Delhi are operational since 1987. As you can see, the, the, the membership is uh, expanding continuously. Um, the latest to access was Angola in uh, 2020. And this tells the organization that probably the mission for which it was established is still very relevant. So it started off as a project of UNIDO. It was really a project of UNIDO in 1987, and it became a full independent intergovernmental organization in 1995 with the mandate to promote research, training, and technology transfer in life sciences uh, for sustainable global development. 
of course, we are aligned with the sustainable development goals, the ones that you see encircled. And what does the ICGB do, basically? In a nutshell, it conducts research in its laboratories, based in Delhi, Cape Town. Uh, it supports training through the awarding of uh, uh, fellowships, long-term and short-term, organizes meetings and courses and workshops worldwide. Um, more on practical aspects now we will we are going virtual as well uh, due to current situation it awards grants uh, to scientists in member countries including early career return grants these are more of a collaboration tool for uh, laboratories more well established in europe and in our uh, member countries uh, in the northern part let's say they are a, a very strong tool for uh, um, having researchers uh, taken a bit out of isolation in areas that are more remote uh, in what we uh, call the so-called global south let's say but it's a very important program and here we need to expand a little bit our activities technology transfer which is uh, one of our statutory mandate to promote innovation and providing technical assistance um, particularly with regards to regulation of modern biotechnology products the macro areas of research are uh, five essentially, so infectious diseases, parasitic diseases and virology, non-communicable diseases, which are um, a major cause of uh, morbidity and mortality, as we all know, not only in uh, OECD countries, but all over the world increasingly. Medical biotechnology through production of biotherapeutic products, technologies, we, we don't uh, reach the product stage. And here is where we um, avail ourselves of partners. Industrial biotechnology, particularly in the area of uh, uh, clean energy, which is a very, very strong interest of um, Indian government. And last but not least, plant bio biology and biotechnology, where we have laboratories in the three components, uh, focusing really on crop improvement, biotic and abiotic stresses, and um, trying to to promote um, more sustainable agriculture. This is just to show you uh, how our posters look like, look like for fellowship. There is a, a yearly call for application for PhD students, postdocs, uh, short-term fellowships, and also what we call smart fellowship, which are from one member state to another member state, from a laboratory in one country to another country, basically. So not necessarily having to come to the ICGB component. This is the calendar of meetings and courses for 2021. Uh, we'll see how much of this will be feasible, but uh, I know already that the flow cytometry course uh, will be held virtually, uh, the one we're doing every year. So we'll have to change a little bit. And this is the map of the ongoing collaborative research grants that I was telling you earlier. So where we have ongoing collaborations with scientists uh, across our constituency. Just a slide, uh, I thought it was meaningful because finally also the ICGB will be eligible to uh, receive European uh, funding to be to be participate to be par to participate. It was always eligible, but it's difficult to run projects if you don't have the funding. Finally, from this year, we did a strong lobbying at the European Union level, but also through our region, Italy ministries, and we will be eligible to host uh, Marie Curie fellows. To, to run Marie Curie Action. So this is a, a well, more or less know all of them. And uh, we are finally also very happy to, to be hosting, uh, to, be, to be able to say we are willing to host uh, postdoctoral fellows. So anyone who would have an interest uh, from very interesting things we've heard from University of Patch to come and have a period uh, of exchange with our laboratories, that would be uh, finally uh, possible and we would be very welcoming such opportunity. So as I'm heading um, the technology fundraising and technology transfer office and there is also my colleague Simona Rus online, we need to tell you our what, what we are doing a little bit. We're trying to promote uh, collaborations as far as possible to bring technologies or innovations that are developed in our laboratories to, to I'm not saying to the market, but at least to reach uh, 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 um, uh, to reach as far as we can, let's say, the market, clinical trial, at least the clinics, this, this is our main aim, then uh, things can go wrong, but at least we've uh, done what we had to do. So thanks to the uh, collaboration and partnership also with Bio for Dreams, 
and uh, the urban center in february this year we participated in the bio in italy investment forum and a bit of a, as a surprise also to us uh, a project that we presented was uh, uh, selected for uh, for um, for being part of this uh, competition and uh, and i wanted to make this example also to bring you a, a testimonial of the activity that bio for dreams is, is doing together with the urban center in supporting one of our projects and trying to develop it into a, a real startup venture so we're kind of excited because the icgb just to give you this background as an intergovernmental organization will never be able to have equity in a startup which is a, a company founded under national law. We are pertaining to the international uh, realm of law. So having startups, we can license out technologies to startups, but wasn't uh, it's not something that we have done a lot in the past. So now we are uh, happy of this initiative and thankful to the support of bio for dreams and the Urban Center and the whole network of um, wonderful professionals that we have uh, encountered. So one of the specificity of the SCGB has been uh, the focus on the development of biosimilar technologies. To this end, we have a biotechnology development unit, which is focused in 30 years on the development of technologies for the production of uh, major biosimilar products. As you know, the biosimilars are the generic version of a biologic product. And all their innovation effort is to make sure that these processes are cost effective so that the, our partner companies located in member states can come to the ICGB, acquire the knowledge, and when they go back, start uh, the scaling up with a technology and innovation that is uh, also sustainable for them. So we work with three platforms, as you saw, bacterial, mammalian, and yeast platform, and have developed, as of today, 12 biosimilar products. And thanks to a funding from the region Florence and Giulia, we are uh, happy to have a real fully equipped uh, pharma compliant laboratory, which has been developed during the pandemic. So 2020 has been uh, dedicated to reconstruction, rebuilding, and I must say they have done a brilliant job. And this laboratory will be made available also to our partner countries, um, partner institutes uh, to further develop some processes. This is the services that the BDU is offering. So anything with regards to cell light development, upstream processing, downstream processing, linkers, chemistry, quality control, all in a fully pharma compliant lab, which is very different as we know from um, a, a research laboratory and can be used also as a training for younger students, researchers, postdocs. So we welcome any opportunity to collaborate on that. Just to show you some impact, uh, in, since 2005, we signed over 20 collaboration agreements with companies located in our member states. And in green on the map, you see technologies which have actually made it to the market. So we've transferred that technology and this has made it to the market. The, the steps are very easy, the procedure. We sign a, a tech transfer agreement and then scientists come to our labs and they spend a period of four to six weeks covering all upstream, downstream and quality control processes. And then leave, they leave carrying with them protocols and material for them starting to reproduce the technology at their own site. Normally we we'll advise even before on what they need to have in place. And, um, and I must say this, this uh, method works uh, uh, very well. In 2020, besides the laboratory, uh, as an idea of the group leader of the BDU was to develop also video-based training because we said if traveling will not be possible, we need to find a way out. And, and so this is also available and we have already signed in January 2021 two new agreements with companies in, um, in uh, Bangladesh and in South Africa for that. We are very happy to collaborate uh, with industrial partners, and we do that in the context of grants that are made available. Um, at the, in, in this case, it was with the, with the region. We have a, a, a project uh, aimed at uh, uh, development of an advanced therapy medicinal product for the, for the difficult wounds, for the treatment of difficult wounds through revascularization. Mm -hmm. So this was done in partnership with Viva Biocell and uh, the results are very promising and they're trying to have a clinical trial. Uh, it's called the hospital exemption in Slovenia. Now um, it has restarted after a, a stop. 
We've also collaborated with other, com we're constantly collaborating with companies trying to uh, translate some of our um, expertise into, into marketable product. And uh, Halifax is one of the companies we collaborate with. He is in the field of diagnostics. It was for the simultaneous detection of three arboviruses, Zika, Dengue, and Chikungunya in 2020 has shifted to COVID, uh, which is fine and it's ongoing. We're also working on gene therapies. And this is an example that I like to show because uh, from uh, an expertise in ICGB on, uh, led by, of a laboratory led by Dr. Andres Muron, expert in mouse molecular genetics, he develops mouse models and uh, gene therapies for diseases. Uh, started in 2006 with the development of a mouse model for Krigel and Lajar. In 2014, the collaboration with Geneton, a patent deposited, and in 2018, a first clinical trial on Krigel and Lajar, and with the first three uh, patients uh, already treated uh, successfully, as far as I understand, in a uh, hospital, in collaboration with many hospitals that you see here on the map, and also in Italy, in the hospital in Bergamo. We, as a research center, we focus on, on the research and development of new biological drugs. This is just an example of a, an innovative technology. And uh, uh, the ICGB is very active also in the development and in the work on diagnostics and vaccines in New Delhi in particular, where they have developed reagents uh, which have gone into all these products that are now on the market in, in India. Um, we are working particularly in New Delhi on uh, dengue, malaria, and tuberculosis. In 2016, we licensed technologies for, the, um, for a dengue vaccine and dengue treatment to Sun Pharmaceutical Industries, which is the la fifth largest generic producer in the world. And uh, since 2020, I think, as everyone else, we've been very busy with uh, uh, research on COVID, uh, research both in Trieste, in our molecular virology lab, in New Delhi, more than one laboratory. And uh, as we have 66 member countries and everyone was really requiring and need support of assistance, we set up this resources web page to try and support uh, our research communities in providing uh, protocols for the diagnosis, uh, tutorial on how to go for RNA extraction or how to isolate the virus, or uh, we were shipping positive controls. Um, so trying to help uh, our constituency in any possible way. We also uh, exploited, there was a small instrument, a financial instrument by the region, Friends of Julia, it's a call for international cooperation initiatives. And we are helping a laboratory in Moldova to set up a um, platform for disease surveillance, which will be useful now for COVID, but you never know also in the future. Um, this is an example I'm bringing because I think it's interesting to know it's a type of initiative that thanks to our constituency we were able to, to deliver. Uh, so in, in July 2020, we started a project supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in partnership with New England Biolabs uh, with a view to enhancing detection capacity of reference laboratories in four uh, low middle income countries in Africa, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Nigeria and Kenya. And this is the teams that we have been working with. Now the pilot phase of this project is at the end. And what we have done uh, in this project, basically we've transferred this low cost breakthrough technology for rapid viral detection, which was a technology developed by NEB. So it was not an ICGB technology, but no matter, it, it was good for our constituency. And we shared best practices and so on and so forth. So, uh, why did we decide to do this thing? Because the technology, the diagnostic labs were all, reference diagnostics lab were all very full of work and this we know. Uh, the diagnostics technology uh, developed by NEB is a LAMP technology, very quick, effective, um, no, no need for equipment and compared to the standard diagnostic method, which as we all know is uh, the real time that requires PCR, real time machine, uh, real real-time PCR machine that you require equipment, uh, staff, trained staff that need to babysit machine and uh, make sure that the results are achieved and takes much longer. So we said as ICGB, we are running a multicentric clinical observational study to compare the two technologies. So we did a scientific work to see if actually the sensitivity and specificity of the LAMP kit was comparable to the gold standard method. So we completed the study um, 
March this year, and now the paper is in preparation, will be in press soon, and actually uh, the results are, are very positive and showed a very, very high specific insensitivity of the lamp kit, uh, such as that we think that this message passed on to the broader scientific community and our constituency is very important. In fact, we are already considering a phase two study. So I wanted to, to bring this example just to show that we would be happy to include also our constituency in projects or activities that we could uh, together think of. Another area where we are very active is uh, on the bioeconomy. So through the study of plant microbiomes, which are very important and um, relevant today because plant microbiomes allow you to identify uh, strains that could be used as per plant fertilizer or biopesticides without, um, no, without the need or reducing the need for uh, chemical agents in agriculture, which we know it's a pressing need. Um, this just to show that another technology being developed in New Delhi, they are very strong on the development of uh, second generation um, biofuels, and this is a technology led, sorry, developed by the group uh, Microbial Engineering, and their, uh, their identifying strains are more effective than current first producer by Novozymes, and we are doing upscaling in 500 liter and 2000 liter with uh, the support of the Indian government that is very keen to maintain the technology as ICGB and not uh, give it out for the time being. We try to have all the facilities uh, at the latest stage, high throughput screening, um, um, microscopy, and so on and so forth that supports our research and uh, are very happy whenever we can build uh, strategic operations and networks. So um, thank you for this opportunity for introducing us to colleagues at the University of Patch today. And here I leave you my contacts. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for your patience. We actually managed somehow to have five minutes more before closing in. So uh, first of all, let me thank everybody. And I would uh, uh, like to open up uh, for any questions or comment prior to some of my closing uh, uh, remarks and, and which I would like to share with you some notes that I took uh, and some next steps along the way. But first of all, I would like to leave the floor for all of you to to share comments or questions. And I might have a brief question. Thank you so much. It was really, really useful. My question is how we can progress to operative steps. So what is your suggestion? How we can discuss some details? Because I, I, I deliberately didn't put any details in my presentation about any projects, just to overview okay. and still longer than I should have been. You asked a very good question. So uh, before I, I, is there anybody else? Or we can maybe just, just go ahead and, and, and put some of my thoughts on, on the table. Today we heard about uh, uh, great infrastructures. We heard about the possibility of joint educational and informational uh, through Erasmus and European networks. We heard about uh, possibilities of joint funding. We heard about uh, um, topics of, 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 uh, of innovation coming out of the research center, which could become business opportunities. Um, these are all different topics, which, uh, uh, of course, each of you manages and, 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 and coordinates within its internal unit. But these are all topics which need uh, uh, further discussion, in particular to what relates on one side, as Martina just mentioned, and I thank her for showing that the opportunity of creating novel uh, business opportunities. But also, you, you, know, you mentioned uh, COVID and, uh, and, and, and Zsuzsanna uh, is, is heading the National Lab for COVID analysis in Hungary. So there are many opportunities within which we envision as a possibility of a joint collaboration. My proposal is to uh, have each of you indicate a representative of its institution, which will uh, create a joint task force. This task force will not be only open to CISA, uh, HCB, and, 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 and University of Page. It will be broadened up as soon as we bring on board more institutions throughout Europe and uh, each of them will bring onto this uh, table uh, a representative person with whom we will create a roadmap, starting with the sharing of some 
of course, uh, confidentialities, and then sharing of some most uh, interesting project which we would like to bring on the table and so on. Today we presented the IGO, the grant office, we presented the business nursery, we presented the innovation circle. All of these will become elements which will create hotspots in the specific international partners that we have. And, and I think that this uh, operative task force, which we would like to start uh, creating and have regular meetings throughout the years, uh, will also define some uh, uh, operative roadmaps to do scouting and to do uh, evaluation of synergies in between. Uh, this is as simple as that, as pragmatic as that. We want to avoid creating uh, complicated infrastructure. We want to create system that rapidly and pragmatically bring down to earth the opportunities by taking advantage and leveraging each other's networks and, uh, and, uh, and, and capabilities. Any comments on that? Thank you. That, that sounds very clear and very straightforward, and we look forward to this. From uh, the Santagote Research Center side, uh, I would like to name Vladimir, who has been the contact person for Bioforgins as well. And I think if he takes this task, I hope he does, then, then he can broaden this up. Uh, by the way, uh, we will follow up this meeting uh, with a um, specific uh, uh, summary of the activities that were discussed, the people who participated, the next steps, and, uh, and, and really what we would like each member is to, is to uh, tell us the person and we will start creating this task force very soon in the next upcoming days. That's great. Thank you so much. If it's enough, Thank you all for being here because it was a pleasure to host this kind of uh, meeting. Barbara, wait just a sec. Sorry, there's a Martina who's want to say sorry, something. Martina. Oh, sorry, I know not everyone is visible, so it's difficult sometimes. I just wanted to mention, and I forgot to say before, that actually Hungary is uh, a member state of the ICGB since 1987, and we have our, our an appointed governor in the country and also a liaison officer that maybe could be also useful to uh, get used to, to colleagues from University of Pech, I mean, as an additional uh, contact point. You no, know, the uh, uh, um, Susanna and her team are very well introduced into the, the as, as they showed into the Hungarian system. So maybe if, if it would be possible to learn about who, who are the current contacts in, in Hungary for the SJB network, we can figure out a way to in, in introduce uh, also the, the, the Pech system. What do you think, Susanna? Yes, I think that's possible. Yeah, I don't, I don't know yet about the contacts, but if you let me know, we can. I will, I will send you the contacts. It's just to boost opportunities that are available. No? Yes, yes, yeah, that's that. That would be great. So we would really support this idea. Barbara, what so, you were saying? Yeah, Sandra. so uh, this is just the, the first result uh, of uh, this meeting. So. Uh, a strong connection uh, between uh, Trieste and Patch. So thank you very much for being here. And um, I think this is a great opportunity to uh, boost the collaboration between uh, an area that uh, as here in Trieste, we are used to be connected. So mm -hmm. Hungary with uh, Italy or whatever, Austria in the, in the past. So thank you very much. Thank you, Fabio, for organizing this, uh, this meeting. I hope to, to see the first uh, results uh, shortly. Once again, thank you, Barbara. Thank you all for participating. We look forward for this to be the first of a series of uh, meetings which will strengthen our collaboration and be very pragmatic in terms of creating synergies. Thank you all for being here. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.